I can perform dancing without a problem, audience, no worries. But every time I play music with a camera or an audience, I am like a hundred percent worse. Hi, I'm a swing dancer, not a professional, just very enthusiastic. And I've decided that I want to learn how to play swing music on the piano. I'm not a complete beginner with this instrument. Throughout all of my teenage years, I took classical piano lessons, so I can kind of already play the piano and I can already read music. In that sense, I could describe myself as a classical pianist. said I was a good classical pianist, but now I want to learn how to play swing music on the piano, so what do I need? A teacher. This is my teacher, Mark. Hello. So you play in an, a swing big band? Yes, they're actually based in Russellsheim and they're called the IKS Big Band. We have chosen two songs uh, mm -hmm. beforehand that I have practiced a little bit of. Mm -hmm. We've chosen two classic swing standards, All of Me, mm -hmm. and by the way, uh, the music I'm using, because I can't really play by ear at all, is I'm using this book, which is known to many jazz musicians. The Real Book is the name. Mm -hmm. It's just a whole lot of standard uh, jazz songs. Many of them are not actually swing songs, really, because mm -hmm. it goes into the bebop era as well. Yep. And all it has is the melody line and chords. That's right. So it doesn't give me too much to work with. <laughs> I know basic chords, but not much else. Do you want to see first? what I've learned. <laughs> Please, go for it. Feel free to make as many mistakes as you like and any bum note is also a good note. Wrong notes <laughs> yes. of jazz? Hmm. It's uh, more or less recognisable, I hope. Very good. Okay, what we can start with first of all is accenting the two in the left hand. Swing music, uh, you often have the two and the four, the offbeat, emphasised in comparison to your Western classical music where the one, two, three, four is. Swing we've always got this one, two, the three, four, and that's right. <laughs> G7 here, you can play. I was playing it, but it's the inversion. Yeah, perfect. So, what you can now add mm -hmm. with your middle finger is the seventh. That's it. No, that's what the minor seventh. So, if we have a uh, just a seven written, a G mm -hmm. and just a seven, that, that's right, that means it's the minor seventh okay. interval. If there is, if it says M A J seven for major seven. That's right. We have the major seven interval. Sometimes that's also communicated with a triangle in chord symbology. So obviously, I've listened to a lot of swing music. I kind of know mm -hmm. what it's meant to sound like. Like yeah. I know what I want to sound like when I play. Mm -hmm. Something that does bother me the most, I guess, is not actually the melody because I'm comfortable playing with it. Mm -hmm. But at the moment. The bass is actually my what to do with the left hand mm -hmm. is one of my biggest problems because okay. I don't know what the options are. Absolutely. So we can start looking at uh, playing bass. Yeah, if you okay. want, we can swap spots and yep. you can demonstrate. Sure. Yeah, and I've just realised you're sitting quite high. No, crooked. I apologise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would have had a bad feeling that it made you feel a bit uncomfortable sitting the way you were. No, the only uncomfortable thing is that I'm bad at piano. We're going to forget the right hand for a second. To keep it simple, first of all, 
we can just start with the root and the fifth. And then we can have little walking elements. Okay, so what did I do there? On, on the downbeat, on one and three, I played the root and then I walked up to the E, what we could call a chromatic approach. So we're going up a note, yeah. and then we're approaching the E and doing the same thing, and then another thing the other way around, and here again. So is that going from the C6 to the E7? You're going that D, D sharp to hit the E? That's right. So okay. um, let's pretend um, with me someone is playing the melody. I might be going... Like that. And then you can start putting it together by playing... hand in between the melody. So just by sticking to the bay, the root and the fifth, you've already got a groove going. In. This is so cool! Hey, drum. <laughs> <laughs> you make that look so easy! It's not fair! How do you make that look so easy? And then we'll progress on to adding some more notes into our walking bass where we, for example, if I'm here on the... Simplest thing I can do. I'll give you a bit of a beat. Two, a one, two, three, four. one progression. This is one of the first walking bass things I learned and I, I still really like it. We're walking from the D to the G and downwards. One, two, three, four. So We'll finish the walking bass chapter of today, I'll say, yeah. on the turnaround at yes. the end. Um, and a nice little thing that I learned in the past was this. We're going... I'll do it again. We're approaching this E flat with a semitone approach from the um, above note, which is incidentally the third of the C. One, Three, flat three, and now what we're doing is called an encirclement. We're encircling this target bass note D here by playing the two adjacent notes, and that's called an encirclement. Very good. Because I can see that the chord progression is mm -hmm. C, E flat. Uh, now that little minor sign is a minor? That's right, that's so, either communicated as a hyphen hmm. or a minus line. It might also be a small n. Sometimes yeah. it's also n-i-n. And what about that little circle? E flat circle, circle seven. seven. Yes, no what does the circle? I didn't bother looking it up. Okay, let's try and figure it out. So you, you've probably learned of the four different types of triads, being the major chord, the minor chord, mm -hmm. and this one. What's that one called? the diminished chord. So what oh. the fourth one in line here would maybe be a augmented chord, which is two major thirds stacked above each other. Yeah. And so we have a back to C. So that would be your turnaround. That's a nice progression. There are ways of spicing up those chords but we'll uh, leave that for now. Baby steps. Yeah, right. <laughs> First lesson. So we can we can try this. Okay. So we've yep. now inverted the C6, C6 yep. and then all you have to do is shift those two notes down there. And what we'll do now, just as a little tidbit to take away, we're not going to play a D7 like this, we're going to play it like this. And 
this becomes a voicing. This is now, the root is in the bass, so you don't need to play it in the right hand anymore. And what we have here is an extra note, which isn't written there, but often no. played. So what could this note be? So this is the seventh. second. Or it's a ninth? Exactly. Perfect. So this is now a D minor nine. And if I move this down, just that note there, we end up with a G13. This is quite often what jazz musicians do as well, a guitarist or a pianist. If you see a G7, you might often play a G13. So we've got here the 7th, the 3rd, and I'm adding the 9 in. And here above here is the, the other one we're missing. The, that was the 13th. Exactly. Seven. Perfect. 2, 3, 4. So that's oh, yeah, inversion. It's just inversion. Perfect. Yeah. And you can go down. And you can also drop the 9 to a B9. Which makes it another. Yeah, because then you've got that chromatic, right? Yeah, perfect. So you've got a bit of a chromatic movement in okay. the harmony in the right hand. Right. Okay. Or I forget. Yep. C6. Perfect. E flat major. What did you call that chord? Diminished 7. Diminished 7. Perfect. Then you did the. Yep. D7 with an added 13. It's yeah, so D minor 9. But you could say D minor 7, 9, but if I, if I say D minor 9, I know the 7th is part of the chord. So quite often with the symbology, if it says, even if it says G9, it also means the 7th is in the chord. So that's kind of the, the study of the chord symbology, which is a, a very interesting uh, topic if you want to get into a jazz piano. And then if it would say G13, I would also know that it has the 7th, the 9th included in the chord. Yeah. C6, yeah. E flat to minus 7. D9. Yep. Assuming I actually have yeah, the bass. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then you said it was... Oh, wait. Is that the next one? No. That would sound great. <laughs> that would work as well. In certain this ways. One, no, this one. That's right. Perfect. Yeah. That's the G... What was this one? 30. And now this one. That's it. See all those sevenths and thirteenths and ninths, like yeah. I know that they help mm -hmm. and I know that they're not written there. Okay. And that's for me one of the biggest differences between yeah. when I try and play something that's written and when I'm used what I'm used to hearing. Because yeah. I'm used to hearing something that has all this extra I don't know, extra depth to yeah. it. Or colour, you could also call it that's yeah. a bit more colour. But yeah. I don't know how to pull that out of thin air. Okay. <laughs> I have a, a sheet of paper for you to take away. That you can use to practice all of these two five ones, two five one progressions. That's it. What's the next one? That's the one. It's going to give me so much to explore because I don't mind playing, mm -hmm. but I just it's hard to know what's a reasonable option. But we can quickly review everything we did briefly if you like. No, um, that's fine, I have yeah. a recording. Okay, if we'll just swap sides for, for one second, yes, show me, Sensei. <laughs> so instead of playing the chords on the beats, we can start pushing them a little bit. So we're playing on the two and. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, and. One, two, three, four. One. And also a good idea to have these stabbed notes. These sort of good, yeah. Short and long. So we go one, two, three, four. Back. Two, back. Go. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I just have to remember what the next note is. Yeah. That to that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's it. Now I have to work on that coordination. Yeah. Because I know what it's meant to sound like. Yeah. But 
I do have trouble with the instinctively coordinating. Yeah, and maybe to a metronome as well. So you've got a click or on YouTube open a, um, a, a drum groove. Yeah. Yeah, I did not know that existed. So YouTube just yeah. has drum backing drum. That's groups. right. Yeah, and uh, tons. Who needs a metronome? <laughs> Boring. <laughs> what I put in was a 100 BPM swing mm -hmm. groove, and you find this, which gives you a nice little counter, and then you're good to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect. There you go. Um, ah, yeah. And this is what we'll give you. So that's uh, don't. I have homework. Oh yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> I have homework. No, actually, that's yeah. good. Yeah. Music homework is the best yeah. homework. Indeed. Woohoo! What What are you giving me? So um, these are different. What we just did here two the top left E, so that would be an A if you play an A in the bass uh, for me for a second there, if you don't mind, yeah, so that would be an A7 flat 9, which nicely moves you to the D, because here we have these two notes only separated by a semitone, and then we play the same voicings. Maybe a stupid question. No. What's a voicing? A voicing is a, that's a very good question. So, if I'm playing a voicing, I'm leaving out the root. So, a D minor seven or a D minor nine voicing, I'm not including the root because it's in the bass. As well as on the G7, I don't have the root, it's there because the bass is playing it. I have a lot to do. That yeah. was my first swing lesson or swing music lesson. <laughs> yeah, not swing had... dance lesson. Quite a few swing dance lessons. You're the expert. Have you learned swing dancing? Uh, only a little bit. I've uh, always been on the musician side of the, the party, but it's something I'm uh, definitely very eager to do one day and get into. Yeah, I know where to go. <laughs> See you on the dance floor. Hey! <laughs>